Okay, so eventually I need to start talking about technical problems or, that are going to come up. So to start with a baseline, we've all sort of used um, like a generic, they call these number two pencils, but they're really an HB pencil. Um, so HB. You're gonna, you probably know it is number two. So, as you move this way, or this way, the no, it's gonna get the pencil will get harder, and then over here, the pencil will get darker. It doesn't, um, or softer, I should say. It doesn't actually get darker. It just becomes softer, so it looks darker. So after H B, you have a B. After B, two B to three B, four B, five B, six B. 7b. And then going in this direction, I always forget which one because there's an F and then there's an H. And I always forget which one is harder or softer. I think it's H to F. But then you go to 2H, 3H, and you get harder in that direction. And again, it's it, it usually like People who do a lot of technical drawing or drafting use these, or if you're going to be doing really tight detail and you need a really hard tip pencil, you'll use those. We're probably going to mostly use this to this to the 6B. Um, and so the problem with, again, your generic number two, or even like your mechanical pencil, is it's usually number two lead. It can only get so dark because it's 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 at a fixed hardness. And also the problem is if you look at the tip, it's most of you are probably using pencil sharpeners, and the angle is always going to be the same. And the problem is you need to be able to draw um, with better line quality. So eventually you're gonna have to get thick to thin lines, and the tip is not it, sharpened this way is not always going to be helpful. So let me show you. So this is sort of the how typically I have my pencil sharpened. Where more it's more at a steep angle on the side, and more of the lead is exposed. So it gives me the opportunity to draw using a wider tip. So um, the idea being is that you don't want to always be using just the needle tip. Sometimes you want to grip it in a different way. So you can use the, that flat surface. So you think about that, you know, that edge is, I don't know, half inch, quarter inch. So I'd, I'd be able to fill up an area way, way quicker if I, as opposed to using just the needle tip of it. Imagine if I had to fill in an area that was that same size but I could only use the, the tip. It would take me forever and it would it would look kind of a little too scratchy. So you know it is possible to to get an edge that's the right angle where you can get a quick consistent um, gradient down. And of course the harder you push darker it looks and it's just that more of the lead is coming off and this is by the way I should say this is a number two pencil I think yeah not to be confused with a this is a 2b sorry not to be confused with a number two so 2b is much softer than a number two which is HB okay so and I guess I should show you how to do this and there's other other you show you, here's a pencil, it's a woodless pencil. It has no wood on it, it's just a big solid hunk of graphite. So, makes it easier to shade because you have like a whole, almost like quarter inch piece of, of side to rub down. So, exacto knife.
which actually, this isn't an exacto knife, this is just like a utility knife. Anything that's razor sharp will work. Um, I think I got this at Home Depot. You can feel free to use an exacto knife. Um, and again, so I'm going to, my goal is to just remove some of this wood so I can have more of an angle to tip it. So the idea being is like, I can only go, so this is my paper, and I'm trying to draw. I can only tip it so far before I start just rocking on wood. Like eventually the corner of that um, piece of wood is going to just hit. And I can't get down any further. So I need to like remove that. And here's what you don't want to do. Like I always find students, they kind of grip it and then they just like start. Uh, 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 uh. So you don't want to do that. So I try to keep my movement minimal. I'll basically, hold on a second, let me move this out of the way. <sighs> Had a window in the way. So I have, I kind of use my thumb to push. I kind of, and then change the angle here. You don't want to have the angle going into it too much. You kind of want to be skimming along the edge. And I don't thrust, I usually push with my thumb. And my goal is to, and I, as I push, I rotate. And my goal is to get rid of the wood. I rotate. So as I'm cutting, I'm I'm twisting it, pushing, and I'm not, again. I'm not I'm not pushing, cutting into it. I'm kind of pushing along it. You can always tweak the, the tilt. And most of my force is coming from my thumb, and I'm even kind of like pulling back on it too. So again, the idea is that you don't want to be doing this. I mean, I guess you could try, it's just dangerous because you have a, a razor blade flying and jerking through the air. Oops. Again. And then, once some of the wood is exposed, has, has, has gone away and you've exposed more of the, um, the graphite, some people, I don't always do this, but some people have piece of sanding paper, it's like a sanding block, and then they'll refine the tip, you know, twisting it around, because sometimes you, when, you, when you're cutting, it'll get kind of jagged and chiseled, but I actually rarely use this. This is if you're doing like really fine detail. So, let me show you some more tools. So the idea is to, to be able to know how to get line quality so you're not always getting a consistent line. And again, up until this point, I've been showing you stuff with some mechanical pencil, which, again, I use that mostly because it's just convenient. Like, if I'm going to go on a, go, go out somewhere and I'm going to need a pencil, just for the sake of speed, I'll, I don't want to bother sharpening, so I, I carry a mechanical pencil. But the drawback is you can only use the tip of it, the needle tip of it. You can't use the side, so the, the consistency of it is kind of a little bland. Um, so here's some ink tools. So this is really popular. This is a Stedler Mars, like a micron pen. And they come in different sizes. But again, they're meant to be used like a mechanical pencil. You're meant to just use the tip of it. And whatever the, the, the number is, this is like a 0 0.5, you're always going to have that thickness. You can't, it's not really meant to be tilted on its side. There are some pens, I think this is Tombow brand, it's made in Japan, um, it's like a brush pen, so it's meant to be used um, on its tip, and you can push down and it'll get thicker, or you can kind of use the side and it'll have a really thick line, so it's, it's, it's handy because you can have needle point all the way to like a fat chiseled line. Which is sort of what you should you should feel like you could do with your graphite pencil. You should feel like there's going to be times where you want that needle tip. And then there's going to be times, and you notice I'm switching how I'm holding it to get to the side. Needle tip. Side. You're going to want to be able to have all of those in, the, in your sort of toolbox. And it's not just, um, you know one single consistent line. There's also, again, 
most of this, these ink supplies that I'm showing you aren't required. We, we are going to do some ink later, but these, these are sort of um, out of the ordinary. Ugh. Here's a brush pen. Um, it's a refillable brush pen, so you can, you can water down the ink. So, just, so the idea being it's almost like calligraphy, where and a brush is meant to be used in different le um, levels of pressure. So is a pencil. But, so if you just barely push, you can get a fine sharp line and if you push down and lift up you can vary the th thick and thinness of it you know I think I require that you have to use a get like a, a brush with your ink so I'm going to teach you some brush techniques when we move on to ink but I just wanted to do this is like basic basic crash course like how do you get different line quality so I want you for the next assignment from this point on I'm going to expect you to have better line quality because I wasn't really focusing on that up until t um, now. I kind of just wanted to get you guys started. So make sure you have um, different values of pencil. I, I think it's in the, check the syllabus. I forget which ones I make required. I don't think I make you have anything as hard as a 3H, but I think I think 2H is in there. Um, and also have an X-Acto knife and then practice sharpening your tip so you can get a line that's sort of like the one I just drew up here. That's, that allows you to slip down to the side. And again, you're gonna ha you have to get over this. I call this the I'm signing my name or signing a check hold. But then you also want to be able to hold it like this, where you can tip it down on the paper and rub it on the side. So you can't do that if you're holding it like this because your hand's in the way. I can't tip it down. Oh, my hand's in the way. So you have to. Pr I want you to just practice. Um, sharpening, getting, I call this the barrel grip, using the barrel grip where you can use the side and make sure you have your um, your different pencils uh, and, and don't forget to refer to the syllabus.